How's it going, guys? Welcome to Audio Addiction. We have high school superstars, plural, with us, and they can say their names and what they do in the band. I guess we can go start that way. You oh, can start. Uh, I'm Mike. I play guitar. I write some of the songs. I play bass sometimes. I sing too. <laughs> yeah. As soon as it started, it just seemed done. To, everything's gone. Uh, my name is Tom. I play guitar and occasionally sing. I'm Matt. I play bass, and I, I yell sometimes, and it's good to be back. <laughs> yeah, Matt's been here before, if you couldn't tell. Not his first rodeo. Uh, I'm Chris. I also play guitar, and I also sing, primarily. Uh, I'm Chris. I also play guitar. And, no, <laughs> I'm, I'm Will. I'm, I'm a drummer and, uh, in this band, and I also play keyboards and uh, like a whole bunch of other stuff, but mainly drums, yeah. Six. So my first question, guys, I always ask this. How did you start out high school superstars? How did you get your members? Matt, you can just leave because I don't know. Anyway, okay. I, I would hand the mic to Seltzer for this one. Okay. All right. So um, back in high school, I, uh, I had a band. And, you know, as those high school bands usually do, they kind of break up as everybody goes off to college. So I post a Facebook status. I'm like, I want to start another band. Who's um, who's down? He responds. He responds. Several other people responded, and um, too many, too many people <laughs> at at first, to be honest. Um, but uh, it just kind of, yeah, I just made a Facebook status, and then three years and change later, we're all here. Almost four. Almost four. That's Almost gross. Four. Two months. Yeah. But yeah, it, it was really just, um, it didn't start off too serious. It was essentially just jam sessions for like the first probably month or two. And it then, really just sort of working out the chemistry, the kinks. I had not touched an electric guitar before, so it was kind of learning that as well. Oh yeah, we all went with him to get More than a single guitar. like cowboy chord. First guitar. Yeah. It's a surprise. <laughs> 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 If, if Dan Electro is listening, uh, I'd sponsor us. We love your guitars. <laughs> They're not Fisher Price guitars. I love my Dan Electro. Um, but yeah, I mean, from there, it was like Chris said, it was really just we jammed a bunch. And then once I was kind of, I was feeling like, okay, like the, the folks that we got here uh, were, were vibing pretty well. We started making music and then it just kind of hasn't stopped. There's been a, excuse me, there's been a lot of lineup changes. Um but I have birds, Will. <laughs> but um, uh, but yeah, it's it's still always kind of been that same spirit ever for like yeah, like you said, almost four years. Every Wednesday, six o'clock, fucking just come over and jam. Six o'clock. Six, six, six o'clock. Six o'clock. <laughs> I knew Matt was gonna say that. I was gonna say if Matt didn't say it, so proud of you. <laughs> Anyway, guys, my next question is, you've played a few shows, and I've actually caught you at a few shows, but what are some favorite venues in the local area that you guys like to play at? Uh, you want to just go down the line? Yeah. I, I would say, I, I, mean, I got to love the um, the Brighton Bar, just because it's kind of our home away from home. Uh, the Asbury Park Brewery Oh yeah, is probably my favorite, uh, especially in, in recent memory. I've been going there almost every weekend for the last like year. Also vibing with the brewery. Brewery's way cool. Yeah, uh, <laughs> obviously um, we like the brewery. I'll have to resound that opinion. It's just, it's nice vibes. There's plenty of room. Uh, like loading in and loading out is super easy, which I always appreciate. Uh, I also really like the brewery, but I think my, my favorite one, though, that we've ever done is probably the Saint. Cause just I really like the sound that we had there. I had that was like my third show. I think we did. Yeah, together. that sound system's tight. Yeah, it was also really good. All them rugs and curtains. Oh yeah. <laughs> no, no reverb if you don't want it. Awesome guys. My next question is to follow up the venues. What was the last show that you attended? That wasn't you playing. Duh. Just to clarify. <laughs> oh, uh, me and Chris just saw Joyce Manor. At yeah, the yeah. The new, lanes. new the new lanes. Yep, yep. Which was awesome. Such as they are. Uh, yeah. But Joyce Manor's yeah, Joyce Manor's one of my favorite bands. And that was always one of my favorite venues even before it reopened. But uh it's like the same thing, just the just nicer. 
<laughs> yeah, honestly, system. I mean, Joyce Manor has always been sort of a, uh, even a songwriting inspiration, even a little bit. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, uh, um, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. That's my favorite too. I mean, I mean, I I want to say Sally Draper, but we'd played that show. <laughs> um, I don't know. It's probably like Coheed and Cambria or Jeff Rose and Sog is the only two bands I go see anymore. <laughs> <laughs> One of those two. Yeah. Um, here. You go to you have memory. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, uh, short style night at the Asbury Park Brewery, uh, Blind Justice, The Wilds, uh, Full Speed Ahead, um, I'm blanking, but it was a really cool night. And, uh, the last show I went to was actually the one that Tom went to with me. It was to see Leprous with the Deer Hunter at the PlayStation Theater. When was that? That was, that was, um, August? A- no, it was like April. April, yeah. Was it April? Yeah, I think something like that. I think that was the last show I went to. Yeah, I remember it was still kind of cold out. Oh, yeah, so, yeah. Yeah, it was yeah awesome that was, that was Leprous, The Deer Hunter, and Between the Buried and May. Yeah, it was awesome. Yeah. That's a fucking lineup right there. Oh, right? yeah. Holy shit. Yeah. Yeah. Sick. All right, guys. My next question is, what are some of your musical influences? I guess we can go down the line and Matt can repeat the same things. <laughs> <I'm just kidding. laughs> <laughs> He's studied. He's done. Matt's done. I'm ready. Do your homework. Major deja vu. Um, any basically, it's it's a weird thing. Um, anything. So anything that's angry, anything that's heavy, anything that sounds like someone dropped something on the floor, <laughs> or this the sound of like a 16 year old boy in the 50s or 60s crying. So any like look, anything like that. So that's what I'm gonna. Any, that's what I'm gonna go with. <laughs> Check out the Serious Matters interview. Very broad. <laughs> um, I'd have to go back to Joyce Manor again, especially in songwriting. Um, huge influence. Uh, Taking Back Sunday has been one of my favorite bands for the last like 15 years. Uh, the Deer Hunter is my all-time favorite band. Uh, Motion City Soundtrack is up there too. Say Anything is up there. Coheed and Cambria is up there. I actually met Mike at a Coheed and Cambria show in 2012. Oh, yeah. um, that's probably like my top almost 10 right there. <laughs> Our kids are going to love that story. <laughs> um, yeah, like Tom said, uh, I mean, it may not be super apparent in my writing, uh, especially my writing, but like Coheed and Cambria definitely uh, has been an influence in so much as like they're the reason I wanted to start playing music. Uh but um more direct influences definitely like Jeff Rosenstock, uh punk bands like the Taxpayers. Um bands that like, you know, or like AJJ. I kinda dig when it's like you could lean into, you know, recording imperfections and just like not worry about polishing everything to a sheen and just kinda like if you can get your message across, it's done, it's good, it's out in the world. Uh, yeah, going off of uh, what Mike said, I gotta say, Jeff Rosenstock was definitely sort of the the root of the tree that is my songwriting, uh, and I learned about him from Mike when, when we go. first met, yeah, and that sort of ended up, uh, to continue the tree pun, it branched off into, um, you know, related acts that he played with, Joyce Manor, Modern Baseball, um, Chris Farron, good friend of Jeff Rosenstock, makes great music, yeah. Um, <laughs> and then they also have a joint band called Anarga Vespucci, which is a huge influence. I encourage everyone to check them out. Uh, and then maybe a couple years on, uh, I discovered this band called Roswell Kid, and I they just have this infectious energy that really resonated with me. So they're definitely a later gen influence on my songwriting. Um, well, I was more from like a metal background, so a lot of my stuff is like bands like Scar Symmetry, um, Devin Townsend's a huge one. I know Tom likes Devin Townsend. <laughs> yeah, Devin Townsend's awesome. Oh, my man. <laughs> <laughs> my man. Oh, yeah. Um, as far as like music that's gotten me like kind of to the point that I am today, like I majored in music, got my degree in it, and you know, teaching math, so you know working out well <laughs> but um oh, i would say my biggest influence in music overall is probably final fantasy music music all composed by nobuo uematsu is just incredible every little bit of it it's amazing 
Awesome, awesome, guys. My next question to kind of follow up the influences, who have you been jamming recently? Who do you, who do you got on? Really cool Long Island band called uh, Rule Them All. Uh, really cool yeah. band, a really cool band called Candy. Just dropped the record last week, no, two weeks ago. Really sick. And uh, a band called uh, Tongue Party. So, nice. yeah, that's, nice. you know, yeah, cool band, cool name, Tongue Party. Check them out. Uh, me personally, recently, I have had uh, Trophy Eyes' new album, oh, okay. American Dream, on repeat uh, at least twice a day for the last like three weeks. Uh, it's amazing, and yes, I'm checking my Spotify right now to see what I've been listening to recently. Checking the cheat sheet. Um, uh, Covid and Cambria's new album that dropped uh, two weeks ago, week ago, something like that. Um, I've been listening to. Matt Pryor solo stuff. Matt Pryor's from the Get Up Kids. Um, Jeff Linden and the Black Spot Society, of course. Shout out. Uh, Strange Things Happen at Sea is one of my favorite albums of all time. I'm um, listening to a lot of Halogens recently, too. They're from around here. Um, probably my favorite local band right now. They are just incredible live, and all their recordings are just so amazing. Uh, yeah, I mean, obviously... Uh, that Coheed record. Uh, but besides that, it's really just I've been apparently bouncing back and forth between comedy albums, um, <laughs> Johnny Cash's America Four, The Man Comes Around, okay. and uh, the first Arctic Monkeys record wow. <laughs> from like the two e eclectic. Uh, let's see here. Uh, I just fell asleep to Dimitri Martin's These Are Jokes Ooh. last night. Okay. Okay. All right, uh, let's see. Well, I, starting from about, like, April, May of this year, um, my taste, I took, I entered a different phase of, like, the music, kind of music that I was into. Yeah. Uh, and I found this artist named Lucy Dacus, who is this brilliant, soulful uh, singer-songwriter. Um, it's like, you know, indie, sort of darker indie yeah. rock, slower, more melodic. And through her, after going through a whole phase with that, I got connected to artists that she had many friends with, including, but not limited to, Phoebe Bridgers and Julian Baker. Um, and coincidentally enough, they've now formed a super group, which is amazing. They're called Boy Genius. They're playing their first shows uh, in early November. And they make some really, really powerful indie stuff that just makes you want to cry, which feels good sometimes. You need that. <laughs> Uh, I'm gonna circle back to uh, Devin Townsend. I just have Oof. him on repeat all the time. My goal is to get through all 31 of his albums uh, <laughs> this year. Oh my God, and uh, it's it's been. Uh, I was I gonna say, how far along are you? I I'm going from like newest to oldest, but I keep listening to albums on repeat because I love them so much. So it's taken a <laughs> long time. He's taking oh, pit man. stops. Oh yeah. Awesome, awesome guys. Um, love the Coheed. I've, I'm a big fan of Coheed as well, so I definitely feel like that's been on repeat for me too. But um, I have a fun question for you guys to answer. If you guys could pick a song to cover, what would it be? Any, Any song cover. cover Any song. Yeah, we cover a lot. But a new one. If you want to throw oh, a new one, one. We haven't done. <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> we we were we we've been like um flirting with the idea of um uh, boys for summer by is it tears tears for fears. Tears of Fears, and like instead of like the little synth thing, it's d does it is it Don Henley? Don Henley Whatever. Uh, the boys are back in town. No. Uh, <laughs> boys of Summer, like and instead of like the um the synth part, it's all in, like the, the uh, we have like a xylophone, so maybe like incorporate the xylophone. But that's that's something that's not definite. Anyone else? Uh, I don't know. I mean, I. If you come to our Halloween show on October 27th at the Asbury Park Music Foundation, we will be covering Jeff Rosenstock's... Uh, which one are we covering? Festival, Festival song. song. There you go. We broke Brandon. I don't remember names. Or places. So anyway, anyone else? I mean, you that Liz Fair song you want to cover? Fucking run by Liz Fair. Okay. Flesh God Apocalypse is the violation, anybody? <laughs> Say it again. I'd love to hear People that. I think we should recover the violation by Flesh God Apocalypse. Hell yeah, brother. Those are, those are words <laughs> oh, yeah. in an arbitrary order. <laughs> I can play that. 
my uh, yeah. If you did my sugar, that'd be tight. Yes. But it would be. We are definitely okay. Bad. Sick. Yeah, I'm, I'm already bald. I'm already bald. So we're like, <laughs> it works. We can for sure, pull off Stenga though. Honestly. Yeah, it's gonna make the face. It's gonna make the the metal face. Yeah, the I'm not yeah, gonna make Jen's it. Kidman face when he's like, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Oh my god. All right. Awesome, guys. My next question is another fun one. Favorite food to eat? All of the above. Uh, you know, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. you Everything. I immediately went to the uh, the rich. Like, that's as soon as where my head went. <laughs> um, uh, I mean, I don't know. Look at me. I love to eat. I can't just pick one food. <laughs> The the quesarito at Taco Bell has oh. been has never hurt me. Of all the things, it's been my constant companion. Oh man. Oh man, yeah. I'm I'm a big Mexican food guy too. Not a quesarito, but any kind of Mexican food. I work in a Mexican restaurant, so it'd be weird if I hated it. <laughs> you good? <laughs> all right. Yeah. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna throw Mexican food in there. I'm gonna I'm gonna um, revisit an old bit I did in the last interview where they did with Serious Matters. What's in my wallet? What gift? It's it's Taco Bell. Let's be real here. Let's be real here. It's Taco Bell, non spawn. You want to get sponsored though? <laughs> Please. Live Moss. 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 Ding. <laughs> right now, I gotta say I'm a big fan of poke. Always, always down to eat just gallons and gallons of chunks of raw fish. Mixed with rice and and furikake and wasabi, <laughs> not wasabi, but all all the good stuff. So big fan of like um, House of Poke or, or what is it, Poke Co. Something in, in Asbury. Anything uh, Poke. Yeah, anything Poke. Oh jeez. Uh. <laughs> Proven Poke Co. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was on it. And I'm just gonna have to tag along to the party. I, I love Taco Bell. Shit food, cat. yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> and pizza, pizza's amazing. I mean, I yeah, go without saying. Without saying. Absolutely. I'm the only one here with taste. Oh, yeah, get out of here, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> not, not, not you, Brandon. Chris. <laughs> you're cool. Yeah, you're okay. Cool. Am I replacing Chris now? <laughs> <laughs> okay, sick. <laughs> we gotta start from scratch. Yeah, yeah, I'll, t I'll teach you all the parts. It'll be okay, easy. sick. Awesome. All right, guys. Next question: If you could pick somebody to collaborate with, whether it be a guest vocalist on the next record or a producer, who would you guys want to work with? Hmm, that's a good question. For like dream scenario for like our next LP, I would love to work with uh, with Ace Enders from the early November. He uh he has a studio actually really close to here and I've loved everything he's like ever produced. So I don't think he's ever produced a bad record. So that that would be mine. Uh, <laughs> I mean like dream dream. Honestly, I would love to work with like Casey from the Deer Hunter in some sort of like have him in like a producer kind of role. Cause we gotta be good at music for that. Jesus Christ, the dude has <laughs> such an ear for arrangement and. Oh, yeah. Oh, and Elsie's just adorable. <laughs> it's a real dream boat. I don't know. I want to hear like Shakira on one of our tracks or something. <laughs> like that? I don't know. Yeah, I know her hips don't lie. My hips don't lie either. So it'd be cool to really, it'd be cool lie. to meet someone who has a uh, a common feature, an interest. Who, whose hips? And bye, Brandon. <laughs> But or like or like uh, I think Kirk Hammett from Metallica, like not even the joke, like him, like him soloing over one of our records would be pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so yeah. Uh, I guess keeping it on a more down to earth wow. level. Okay. Um, I Oof. would really love to have uh, Chris Russo, um, one of our good friends, um, oh. sing along with us on a song someday. That kid, what when? You could do it right now. Next, tomorrow <laughs> call tomorrow right. would still be someday. Chris, all right. <laughs> <laughs> so because when that dude sings, he sings with, with passion and feeling unlike any that I see. Uh, and he's just such a good soul. And so I would love to work with him. I love you, Chris. 
And I guess I'm taking it back to an unrealistic place. Yes. And, uh, Sick. And yeah, yeah, that's what I want. <laughs> you already know I'm going to say Devin Townsend because he's just, I love his. <laughs> I, I just, I really love the way he writes music and I always love that wall of sound. And I think it would be really interesting to have his take on punk and combining that with a wall of sound. And I, would, I think that would be a really cool sound to have. Wholeheartedly agree. Yeah. yeah. That's that'd be tight. Be that'd be tight. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Devin, if you're, I'm gonna get up real close. Devin, Devin, if you're watching this, this question: If you could play another musical instrument besides the one you know how to play now, what would it be? I keep looking at Matt because he already knows the question. So, <laughs> I would probably pick the trombone, and I do that because I don't play it now. I used to play it back in middle school, and I really liked it. It was just, yeah, yeah, we were in the same, yeah, in middle school band. I played the the, tr the trombone. And, you know, back then it was just, you know, learning Pomp and Circumstance and 25 or 64, all these random songs. But nowadays, the I find, I'm finding that the best application of the trombone would be for ska-esque type music. <laughs> and we are, we are always one at the forefront us, on the front lines of the battle us, to bring back us. fourth waves, or bring in the fourth wave ska. Uh, Will. I mean, you play you play every instrument, Will. I so. mean, that's the goal. If someone asks me what instrument, instrument do I play, and I want to be able to say everything. So I, I guess, yes. like, I'm working on guitar right now, so I guess my next instrument I would want to do would probably be bass because it's more rhythm-centered and, like, drums and kind of keyboard can be rhythm-centered. But, uh, yeah, I would go with bass. It seems hella fun. I would say drums are mostly rhythm-centered. <laughs> um, but drums are definitely uh, something that I would like to learn how to play proficiently. I got I, you. It's Yeah, no, it's, al it's always fun when I get to mess around on a kit. Yeah, I know nothing about playing drums, so my answer would be drums. I think everybody in this room can at least somewhat play except me. But no, all right. Rock band. Oh, not, yeah, not you. Rock band not on you. hard mode. mode. Rock band on, yeah. The best practice tool. No, mine would def I definitely want to learn drums. You know what? I've been, you know, everyone knows that I'm primarily a bass player, and I noodle around on the like the six string guitar a little bit. But to, like, I wish I can actually play the guitar and like shred solos and all that stuff. That'd be sick. That would be tight. Me? Ooh. Yeah, man. Probably drums, honestly, because uh, I have no hand feet coordination whatsoever, so I can't do it. I play guitar, so I can't. I just can't do it. It's just not. It's not my wheelhouse. That's fair. I make a. I do a mean air drum, but that's about it. So, <laughs> anyway, guys, my next question. You kind of alluded to it a little bit, so I'm glad we picked up on it. But I'm a huge nerd, so I always gotta ask this question: If you could be a video game character, don't pick the same thing, Matt. Who would you be? <laughs> oh, that's that's <laughs> oh, no. No. Yo, yeah, 100%. I'd be Toad because he just yells and screams like, ah, it's like, that's all he has to do. And I, I'm fine with that. I'll be Toad. Sorry, Goldberg and WrestleMania 19 for the Game Boy, uh, GameCube, Nintendo. Sorry, not today. Um, I'm so glad you remembered that. <laughs> that is. I think the hardest question I've ever been asked. Yeah. <laughs> uh, off the top of my head, I don't even know. Um, Dante from Devil May Cry. Big Devil May Cry fan. Uh, I think that was like one of the first video games I ever played. So that's 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 what I'm going with. Um, I know what you're going to say. At least I think. I'm trying to not just go with the, like, oh, I want to be Master Chief from Halo. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking bandwagoner. Um, I forget the name of the dude, but there, there's, like, this indie game called Firewatch. And oh, yes. I, I love that game, and I would Bless. love to be that dude. Not even, like, with all the weird, like, p somewhat, like, paranormal stuff. Just to, like, get paid to just vibe out in a cabin in the woods all summer. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, my God. <laughs> that would be a Slowly dream. realize that the government might be... Uh, investigating on your actions. Oh, yeah, exactly. Well, I mean, uh, I, I already think that, but then mm, I'd be in a cabin. Meet a woman with a lovely voice. <sighs> that game made me cry. That's so good. <sighs> I would say uh, Kratos from the God of War series. Ooh, Man, he okay. He's just... <laughs> He can beat the shit out of whatever he wants. He can <laughs> take down every god from every kind of mythology you can think of. It's 
And it's Matt, and, uh, <laughs> it's Matt Simulator. It's Matt Simulator. <laughs> Coming soon to um, your all platforms. Yeah, yeah. Mm. <laughs> and now that his character has depth, it's even better. He's got a son that he loves. It's gonna be great moving forward in the series. Being the crap out of Thor and stuff like that. So I, I like Kratos a lot. This is a really hard question. <laughs> I don't think he's Devin in a Townsend's game. Townsend's my favorite video game character too. Townsend Simulator. Townsend. <laughs> Maybe Lavos from Chrono Trigger because the dude's Ooh. an absolute unit. I mean, look at him. <laughs> In the law of the size of the um, True. I, I, Accurate. I have no idea, though, besides, like, I have no serious answer. I have no idea. I'm, I'm surprised he didn't pick Gerald from Witcher. Gerald, wow. yeah, from Witcher. His hair is amazing. <laughs> I'm so mad I didn't even think of that. Yeah, yeah I'd be a... Uh, I'm changing my answer. I'm, I'm Geralt. Geralt from the Wit from the Witcher Three, which is my favorite game of all time. I'm gonna change my answer too. I wish I was the opening music in the Doom Two, uh, <laughs> yeah. main menu. Just the music. Yeah, that'd be cool. You I'm, are the music. I am oh, the music. I'm gonna change my answer to <laughs> to the boss from the original Tron game. You ever see it? It just looks Jeff. Bridges. Jeff, Jeff <laughs> is it Jeff Rosenstock? No, it's okay. just some terribly drawn, terrible battle. It's just a terrible fight, and it's hilarious. <laughs> so I'm gonna go with it. Awesome. All right, guys. Next question. In your opinion, who puts on a great live show? In terms of bands that you've seen. I did mention Pup. A little bit before I, I would have to answer pup they are just melting everyone's faces off with just how much energy that they they put out on the stage um, the drummer especially I, I, the name isn't coming to me right now but he just it's it's so good it's so good you can't help but just jump around and like not punch people but like get intimate in that way you, I mean you could you could if you, you wanted could to. not my cup of tea. <laughs> Um, I would have to say Taking Back Sunday is probably my favorite live performance of all time. I've seen them, I think, 16 times now, I think, 17 and 18 coming in December. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, like, there's a reason, obviously, I've spent that much money on one band. It's just, they have, like, the most unique energy. It's, like, the perfect blend of, of, like, such a great live performance and then, like, even some comedic relief in between songs like they're just such good performers and that's all well, what going to a show is about is like the performance not just the music uh i mean obviously you know like big bands like like coheed and you know, like they obviously put on a, a great show the deer hunter puts on an amazing show but um oh yeah but who <laughs> who is a band we played with serious matters at the we played at um in trenton they had like the the one dude had like the giant amp set up. That wasn't it wasn't Chaser. Sparrows. Chase Sparrows. Sparrows. Sparrows blew me away. I believe they're from Canada, right? Yes. They're from Canada. Canada. They're on tour, I think. No, they're, they they, they were, were on tour. They were on tour. They'll probably be on tour again. They're called <laughs> Sparrows. But Jesus, like it was at first I'm like I'm going to lose my hearing seeing like all the amps and everything set up, but those dudes like they are masters of whatever they're doing on stage. Like it was, it wasn't even loud, like too loud that I needed earplugs, oh, and it was just like this amazing like sonic experience. <laughs> Fucking check out Sparrows. Blind Justice, Blind Justice is really sick. Uh, their vote, their uh, singer Mike Body. That dude's a fucking like psychopath, essentially. <laughs> not a not a bad way, but like, when every time I see them live, and he like he's like creeping and crawling, he's yelling in everyone's faces and putting the microphone down your throat. That's always a good time for me, at least. So yeah, Blind Justice, best band live. Someone put it. I'm sorry. I, I uh, I'm having a brain fart. So I remember there was like a video from their one of their shows at like United Blood a couple years ago, and someone uh, Brody King, who was like a pro wrestler, was there, and he put someone through a table during their set. It's really really cool. I go to that. Um, I have a tie between two bands because I just can't choose the band I saw with Tom Leprous. They put on an incredible show. They are full of energy. They're all extremely talented musicians. They even brought a cello guy out for their show. It was Ooh, super cool. That's tight. That cello player. That cello player was insane. That yeah. was 
I have never seen that instrument played that way. That no, was mind blowing. It was incredible. And then the other band I would have to give it to is um, I saw Meshuggah a little over oh, a year ago, man. Uh, and they are just it just phenomenal. There's just I can't imagine being able to play one of those songs through perfectly, and they're all just just going through and playing so many of their songs just perfectly, full of energy, getting everybody into it, and it's. I don't understand how they're able to do that. And shout out to Per Nilsson for filling in in Meshuggah for this past year, <laughs> along with Nocturnal Rights. And he's going to be going with his original band, Scar Symmetry. And it, I don't know how he balances all of that stuff right now. If he somehow hears this, props <laughs> to you, Per Nilsson. <laughs> awesome. Nice, nice. My next question, guys, to follow up best live bands, if you guys could compile a dream tour, who'd be on it? I feel like... To make it more interesting, each one of you pick one band, and that will be your tour. Oh, fuck. That's a huge response. I don't, I'm not going first again, because I picked wrong with the venue question. <laughs> <laughs> wrong. I chose wrong. Everybody was like, oh, you're done. Incorrect. <laughs> you failed. Um, our friends in Leeds. Oh, fuck. Yeah. I would love... We toured with them mm-hmm. once, and I would, we would love... The tour with them again. I love them all. Quite a grand old time. Connor, Matt, Rich. Other Matt. Other. <laughs> no, I'm the other Matt. And Jesse, I love you guys. Let's tour again soon. Uh, yeah, that Leeds tour was amazing. That was some of the most fun I've ever had mm-hmm. in my entire life. Um, That's one of the words. Yeah. <laughs> they built some uh, character. On the top of my head, I would right now I would say Halogens. They're Halogens or or Jeff Linden. Uh, oh, one. You uh, can only pick one. Ha- I'm, I'm, I'm going halogens. Sorry, Jeff. <laughs> I would have said whichever one can like survive a fist fight. Guess That's fair. Yeah. Uh, they have to fight each other. <laughs> halogens versus uh, Jeff Linden. One round. Steel cage. <laughs> Pay per view only. Two bands enter. One band <laughs> leaves. Uh. Do I pick a band I like and don't know, or a band I like and do know? <laughs> How about a band you just don't like? I, I, I should pick know. one I don't like and I don't know. How about that Weedus, huh? <laughs> no, um, I, I love Weedus. Teenage, like, teenage Dirtbag. Teenage Dirtbag bands. The one song everyone knows. Um, <laughs> oh, this is such a tough question. Um, honestly, uh. You remember Bad Moves? They opened for yeah, yeah, yeah. Bad oh Moves would be fucking They're so good. Oh wait, shit! Now I'm thinking Copes. Oh. Uh, oh uh, no, oh, no. Cut that, okay. Edit that also, out. also, <laughs> we have the second Steel Cage match. Yeah. Is, <laughs> is Bad Moves <laughs> versus, versus Copes <laughs> versus Copes? Yeah, we're yeah, the, that's the tour kickoff. Yeah. <laughs> it's gonna be a WWE event. <laughs> Sports entertainment. Yeah. That'd be tight. Let's do it. Yeah, so one of them too, uh, or both. If I could bring both, that would be also can't. awesome. I can't. One of them has to die. So <laughs> there can only be one this Sunday. <laughs> um, it would be a very weird bill and well outside of our wheelhouse, but I'm really falling in love with uh, the with sales ahead guys. Aww. I'm s- I'm starting to spend more time with them. Um, got some exciting things in the pipeline specifically. Uh, but I'm, I'm making really great friends with all of them now, and they are just, they're meant to do what they're doing, and they make incredible music, uh, and they're a riot to watch. Like, that's that's the most I could ask out of a band that I want to tour with. So, love you guys. <laughs> no, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to, sup- oh, wait, who is, um, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with High Wind. High Wind. Uh, I think we, a fresh meme. Right? I think we are going to. Yeah. Well, there we go. <laughs> so, you know, dream come true. Yeah. yeah, there you go. You got what you asked for. <laughs> I have beef with, with sales ahead. <laughs> no, Matt, why did you do it now? <laughs> All of you, watch yourselves. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to... Never mind. <laughs> wow, you... <laughs> Meet me on Twitter. <laughs> that really didn't go over well. I could, I could just feel it, but whatever. Anyway, guys, next question. Favorite TV show, favorite movie? I can uh, eat. Uh, probably have it in like 4K Blu-ray. <laughs> <laughs> I have in 6K VR right now. I have a VCR. Um, 
Favorite movie is it's a tie between uh, Pee Wee's Big Adventure and Bronson, and and my favorite that's that's like my third favorite, and then my favorite TV show is uh, probably uh, tie between uh, no it's Seinfeld. <laughs> no contest. Uh, my favorite movie uh, easily is Clerks. <laughs> um, yes. <laughs> Um, favorite TV show? I'm gonna say Parks and Rec. Ooh, good one. Excuse me. <laughs> oh, I fucking wish. <laughs> uh, yeah, favorite movie. I can think of like 15 on top of my head. I mean, I really want to say Blade Runner, but I know I'm gonna just like as soon as this is over, I'm just be like, I should have said the movie or whatever. It's B movie, B movie. <laughs> No, Isn't it? No, no, no. no uh, Blade Runner, definitely. Uh, that fucking soundtrack, Vangelis knocked it out of the fucking park. Um, favorite TV show? Um, honestly, probably Ghost Adventures. Zach Baggins is fucking hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> Endlessly rewatchable. I'm uh, I'm torn between two movies because I really love the Boondock Saints. I can Ooh, watch that just all the time. It's so much fun to watch. And um, if I want to fulfill like my inner nerdiness, I really loved the movie Final Fantasy VII Advent Children when I was a kid. And I just I could watch it all the time. I love the music in it. It's so good. And um, favorite TV show? I'm sure you guys know from how much I love to be annoying with the impressions. Exactly. All G's, Rick and Morty. <laughs> all G's. All G's. Yeah, and now it's on <laughs> That's gonna be forever. Mm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thanks. It's on the internet. Did this happen last time we were interviewed? Because I remember something really similar. Something I akin to that, that, yeah. Ah, uh, fa- I can't remember yesterday. So. <laughs> I <can't. laughs> Favorite movie is probably uh, The Social Network, the, the Facebook oh, movie ah. from, from years. Yeah. <laughs> yes, <laughs> Mark, uh, Jesse Eisenberg. Jesse Eisenberg. Over Eisenberg. Here, yeah. Wow, this is such, uh, a, this is such a great thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You know, just like the combination of Aaron Sorkin's writing and, and David Fincher is just, it, it's, it, they're, they're artists, they're artists, and it's, it's, an, it's endlessly rewatchable for whatever reason. I don't know. It's just, I love when everyone is in the movie is just too smart for their own good and they're all just bashing heads. Um, in terms of show, I am a huge fan of Peaky Blinders. Um, oh, okay. Watching that through yep. Netflix, it is like this. It, it is. I don't even know how to describe it. Oh, you know what? Well, yeah, for. <laughs> he said Westworld. By the way, <laughs> couldn't hear that. Yeah. Yeah, for for those that have seen any of Peaky Blinders, they just nail the atmosphere and the time period and the art of. Really sweaty, stylish men walking past <laughs> slow motion ironworks like f- collateral <laughs> fire blazes. It's beautiful. You're really selling this show yeah, right yeah. now. And the music too. It's great. So you guys ready for this? If there was one album that you could bring with you onto a desert island for the next month, Easy. what album would it be? Easy. Ooh, Tom's got Easy. it. All right, Mr. Easy. I'm gonna Easy. This might come as a surprise to a lot of people, but um it would be my favorite album of all time, which is from Under the Cork Tree by Fall Out Boy. I am in love. I could have figured that. Specifically the guitar tone on that album is like my dream guitar tone. I try to match every <laughs> All the flavors. Every Every time I get a new pedal, every time I play with the settings or my amp settings or anything, I just try to get, to get one as step closer. close as I can to making uh, even a, a little bit of the tone <laughs> on that album. It's just, it's amazing. Um, and I can't just bring like an audio book, like How to Survive on a Desert. <laughs> <laughs> I somebody asked me that like yesterday about that, so you could. Uh, well, I mean, if, if not if, that, if not that, like if I had to pick an actual record, um, the first Arctic Monkeys album, whatever people say I am, that's what I'm not, I think is the title, something like that. Uh, just, I don't know. I just, I feel like, um, I appreciate how much they experiment every album, but I feel like they really had something with like this weird, not weird, this like kind of post-punky, like 
the drums were mathy and the guitar riffs were like killer but like a lot of it was like all clean guitar and everything it was just really cool dynamic wise and songwriting wise i have been listening to that album at least like once a week like since high school <laughs> yeah that's so long ago <laughs> <laughs> I, in my mind, it's like feels that long ago. I know I said it, um uh I said bad brains rock for light in the last video I did, but um I'm I'm going to change it. I'm going to change it. Sorry bad brains. Um I'm going to go with Thin Lizzy's Live and Dangerous cuz just bangers upon bangers upon bangers and there's like a song for every mood and it they're just a they were they were a perfect live band. Yeah, so because they're, they're, I mean, yeah, Phil's dead. But Trying to make yeah. a beef here. All right, moving on. <laughs> yeah. Um, if I were to end up on a desert island, I'm pretty sure I would die. So there, there would be no hope for me. So I would Damn. want to hear music that sort of reminds me of home and sort of a warm, happy time in my life. And to that end, I would choose uh, fully. I do uh, Fall Out Boy. That record just hit me in the right place at the right time, especially when it was like new and, and freshly released. It is just end, end to end, I feel a masterpiece of, of songwriting and tone. Like, going back to that. I just re-listened to that album for the first mm -hmm. time in like mm -hmm. easily two years yep, yep. at work the other night. And mm -hmm. oh man, I missed it so much. <laughs> yeah, right? It's like an old friend or, or yeah. a blanket you can wrap around oh, yourself. Yeah. What a Catch Donnie is probably one of my favorite songs ever. I would agree. Yeah. And uh, I'd give this one uh, to Addicted by Devin Townsend. <laughs> I know, big surprise, right? Who, Who would have guessed? Guess? But mainly just so I could listen to E.A. just endlessly for the rest of my days. It's one of my favorite songs of all time. It's only, it's like three and a half minutes long, and it's incredible. It's so great. Awesome. And lastly, guys, the most important thing, tell them about your band, High School Superstars, where they can find you at, and anything coming up in the next couple months. Um... Oh, if you can you, you chime in as you see fit. Gotcha. But uh, yeah, um, it's looking to be a pretty exciting sort of fall into winter um, season. We got uh, a handful of shows coming up on the 27th at uh, Music Foundation. It's a Halloween show. Come dressed up. Uh, and then we have playing an acoustic show in Edison on the 2nd of November. Oh, well, Will can no. Oh, well, acoustic. Will can yeah. make, uh, acoustic. <laughs> <laughs> all good all good it's on the internet uh, and then another um a full show at brighton bar on the fourth gonna be a fun time gonna be a fun week that, with bar. serious matter uh, with serious matter matters. Matters. yo um and then we got a lot of new material in the oven Just a lot <laughs> not actually you know what not in the oven it's marinating right now it's, it's <laughs> marinating the fridge it's in the brine the salt yeah. we're making a baby <laughs> <laughs> In a manner of speaking, yeah. Uh, there he goes again. A whole, a whole bunch. Do of we days. hold the record for how many times you've <laughs> you've walked away? Three, Damn. Three storm offs. Uh, three I'm kind of disappointed. Quits. What's wrong with five dads? Yeah, we're gonna be spending uh, a majority of uh, <laughs> a majority the winter. A majority of the fall and the winter uh, in a basement. Maybe it's a studio. Maybe it's yeah. not. May, may or may be recording, may or may not be making not. noises that may or may not be being recorded into high res microphones <laughs> that may or may not be being arranged into a very precise arrangement of uh, digital ones and zeros. You didn't hear that from us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you can yeah. check us out on all forms of social media. Yes, yes, uh, of course. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, yeah uh, Bandcamp, Spotify, all major streaming Apple platforms. Music. We're on Instagram, um, Twitter. Our Twitter is sentient. Yeah. yeah, it's it's become alive. It has a mind of its own. We haven't been able to stop We're it. Not, we are not accountable for anything that it says. We simply feed it. <laughs> um, but yeah, check it all out. Um, everything is is should be some variation of at the high school superstars. Google will show up. I th hope. I think. Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> but yeah, we're, we're up One to time I was like curious about like us on the internet. So I I um I googled the high school superstars and it was like check out these photos of WWE superstars when they were in high school. <laughs> I was like that's us. That's us. <laughs> it's us. What's up we're Kevin first Nash? On Google. I just wanted to clear up there. But anyway, yeah. 
If you want to support these five dads, please check the links in the description. <laughs> check the link in the description where you can find out about high school superstars uh, and any shows coming up, of course, if you live in New Jersey. Um, if you enjoy this interview, share it, like it, subscribe. Smash it goes a long way. Smash, Smash that, like that like button. I'm not going to do that thing. Anyway, <laughs> thank you guys for watching this. Thanks to high, high school superstars for coming yeah, on. Yeah, thank you so much, man, for having us. Don't forget to leave a comment saying you liked our video. You want to say that again? Uh, yeah. uh, like, subscribe. Don't forget to leave a comment saying how much you loved us. Uh, yeah. Uh, and Brandon. Pa Patreon, GoFundMe. Uh, Patreon, um, GoFundMe. Tumblr. <laughs> Our Indiegogo campaign. Indiegogo. <laughs> and you can pick up this uh, at your local Blockbuster. <laughs> hey, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, thanks for watching, of course. Uh, if you enjoy what we do, make sure to go check out the other series we do. We do album reviews, we do band interviews, and we do live videos, so definitely go check that out. Um, hit that subscribe button. It really helps our channel, helps us grow. Make sure to hit that like button as well. Uh, go follow us on social media. That's all down below. We try to keep that as updated as possible. We also made a new website where we'll be posting photos of upcoming concerts and stuff like that which you can go check out at audioaddictionmedia.com and come get your fix with us guys talk to you later deuces